So Thomas, are, are there any themes that you believe will influence portfolio construction in 2020? I mean, how might investors tweak their portfolios to exploit any new trends? I think the US-China trade confrontation uh, is creating a bit of a quandary for investors. And I think it might be an interesting time to be looking at the other emerging market countries and regions. So it's, it's very notable over the last few years how large a part of the emerging market index China has become, and even more if you include China, Hong Kong, Taiwan together. And conversely, how small certain other parts have become. So Latin America is 10 or 11% of the emerging markets index. Russia is 5, 5 or 6%. So these tend to be very underrepresented areas in most investors' portfolios. And I think if you look at the correlation to China uh, in terms of stock market returns, um, it's been quite low. Uh, and so that could be an interesting place to sort of increase your emerging market allocation, particularly as both countries, both regions, Russia and Latin America, uh, have some very interesting reforms going on uh, from a corporate governance perspective. Maybe on a similar theme, I think Japan is undergoing a once-in-a-lifetime change in corporate governance, which has started to be reflected in the markets, but many investors have been sceptical about because, of course, Japan has, has been a basket case for many years, and there have been all sorts of false dawns for, the, for that economy and, and market. But what we have is a... a a government with a very strong position in the polls and in parliament, which has been forcing a change in corporate culture to try and cre create a more efficient, um, more efficient corporate uh, sector and to try and pull the economy out of its slump. Uh, and that's been felt in much more openness to investor engagement, massive increase in buybacks, a doubling of buybacks on, on the last year in, in 2019, more dividends, offloading of assets uh, across shareholdings, which are uh, not really generating any returns for shareholders, but create a sort of cosy environment for management. And the market has done well uh, in 2019, and I think this is the beginning of a, of a story that could do well for many years to come. Another theme I think we all need to be aware of is sustainability. So, you know, it, it's it's clearly something that is in the top of agendas politically around the world. And I think having managers who properly incorporate uh, environmental, social, uh, corporate governance risks within their investment process is an important thing to be doing at this point in time uh, because political change can happen very quickly. We've seen how volatile elections can be in the developed world as, as well as elsewhere. So I think that's something that people should be looking to try and build into how they think about their portfolios more. Mm -hmm. Certainly sort of ethical investing is, is something that that's people read about um, far more, certainly in the, in, the, in the past six months and perhaps through it's been building, a theme that's been building through 2019 as well, gathering steam. Are, are there any investment trusts within that ethical um, ESG space that, that, that you, would, you would be looking at now? I think the most interesting development is that the, what was considered an, a sector uh, or a different way of doing investing has just become incorporated into the mainstream. So I think trusts like, for example, Alliance Trust, which is managed by Willis Towers Watson, they incorporate uh, environmental, social and governance risks, or sustainable investing risks into their investment process at every stage. They view it as a part of risk management. They're not alone in that. It's, it's a growing growing theme. But it's interesting to, to look at that one in particular because, of course, Willis Towers Watson have that strong institutional background. They run a lot of pension fund money, sovereign wealth fund money. Um, so they're very up to speed with how the broader investment community is thinking about these risks. And that, of course, determines corporate returns to a large extent because these, these are the people who are investing in, in global companies. You know. So I think that's, that's an interesting trust to look for. I would say also um, the teams at Martin Curry have done a, a very good job of integrating ESG within their uh, investment um, objectives and, and uh, analysis, uh, which is becoming a growing theme. I think one of the historical leaders in this regard has been uh, Stuart Investors and Pacific Assets, which invest in Asia-Pacific equities. 
they have a very strong sustainable investing ethic and they view it as very much a part of what makes a, a business prosper in the long run, that it, that it has a sustainable attitude towards the society and the environment it lives in, in it operates in. This is an important criteria to be, to be a successful uh, investment in the long run. So I think that's another trust that investors could look at if they want you know, Asia exposure with that sort of mm. sustainable investing tilt. So investment trusts can be a great way to build a portfolio or, and be part of and to build. If I were new to investing in 2020, though, could I build a well-diversified portfolio with just a, a handful of trusts? Um, and if you think yes, what, when, what trusts would be the building blocks of that, that portfolio? I think if you're relatively new to investing, a good place to start is a portfolio that takes a fund of funds or a manager of manager approach and really tries to build a diversified portfolio itself for you. So, Alliance Trust is a great example of this. Uh, they have appointed various managers to pick their best ideas in different regions around the world. Witan is another trust which does a similar, uh, it does a similar type of thing. JP Morgan Multi Asset uh, is a multi asset approach, not so much a manager of managers, and they, they manage the different assets themselves. But you, so there are a number of sort of core building blocks which you can start to to invest in and then maybe try to build your portfolio around the edges as you gain more confidence in where, where you want to be investing, making sure that you pay attention perhaps to position sizing, just be aware of what uh, exposures you build up as you add to those, those core building blocks. I would also highlight that we have a series of uh, rated funds that, that we have calculated to be particularly strong performers in recent years and, and awarded a income and growth rating too, which are you know, good, pl good places to look for candidates if you're very new to the investment trust space. Uh, but I think beginning by allowing somebody else to, to do the, the asset allocation and then adding to that and, uh, as you develop, I think is a, is a good way to go. Thomas, thanks for answering our questions. Ah, thanks for the invitation.